this, I'm going to say it's a variant, but it's only a slight variant. Uh, this fly originally was tied by a gentleman called Dave Whitlock. Now, it's a very good fly to have in your box. Now, the hook I'm using is a Camasan. It's a P175, and it's a size 14, which is a very strong, solid wee hook. I'm going to lead the body. Now, with the lead foil cut, now I've cut it round about a millimetre wide. Now, I'm going to start the lead in line with the point of the hook. Take the lead, take the turns up, stop it about a mil from the, the eye. I'm just going to break off the waste piece at the back first. And then I'm going to bring it halfway down the lead, back down. You get to that point, just break it off with a nail. And that there will give you the shape, taper shape, or help you anyway, to find that shape in your nymph. Just rub it with your back of your nail, and that will smooth out any lumps or bumps. Now, thread I'm going to be using is a tan thread in uni, and this is the AO. Start at the eye. And just using the waste piece of th thread to control the turns. Just work it down the shank. Take it so it's just before it goes around the bend, just slightly by the, the barb of the hook. Now, the fox squirrel nymphs, hence its name, is named because of the material used. This is the red fox squirrel, and this is the, the, the Matthias is the guard here, this is the main hair that runs down the body, which we're going to use in the tail and in the thorax. And the body, we're going to use this lovely, kind of bleached, natural bleached colour, kind of blonde, that makes a lovely, it makes a great body. It's very good for caddis patterns, and this fly is very good for that. What you do is just pull it off and then mix it in your finger and thumb and that will give you your, your blends. Now, as I say, the tail we're going to use the guard here, so we just take it, some of the guard here, and bring it 90 degrees from the skin. Once we bring it from 90 degrees from the skin, it usually lines up the ends and then we can cut away. And you've got it there. That's some of the under first. Just but don't throw that away, just lay that down. Because you can use that as dubbing. And then get these cut ends and have a look to see what you've got. I'm just gonna line up the ends a wee bit better. You don't need as much as that anyway, so you can pull out some of the some of the the guard here. The length you're looking at least half the shank for the tail. So I'm gonna catch this on. Now I have the cut ends towards myself. Now as I bring the thread over Basically like a, quite reasonably, not a loose turn, but a kind of medium turn over that it's going to not catch it in straight away, but allow it to twist with the turn, a thread, so you can set it on the top. Now, first thing I'm going to look at is the length, see how much is on there. Now, just a wee tad too much, so just keeping the thread turns tight. At this point you can remove some of the hair. A couple of more turns just to... Secure it in once you're happy, which I am. Now I'm looking for a nice, a gold tinsel, or you could use a gold wire. This is a small gold tinsel, there we go. To catch that the full length of the body, but I'm going to take it all the way up the thread, touch and turns button, wax the thread, it's important that you do that. This tidies everything up. At the same time you're forming a nice shape, a tapered shape. You go towards the eye and then head, head back down. You see where you are? It's fine. Right back at the tail. Now we've got the belly fur. We've mixed it up. There you are. Just take some. I just mix it between my finger and thumb. Just keep applying it back and forward just to mix up the, the under, fair, under fur sorry, with the guard here. Double onto your thread. You don't need a lot. Just then, just take your time. Just form a nice taper. Now I'm looking at a white background, which, for a light coloured fur, is not always the best colour to look at. But I can see the the shape that I'm looking looking for. 
And even if you don't get the type of shape, you have still the shape you've built up with the thread. And when you bring your tinsel up through, you'll see even better. Now at this point, I think I just need a tiny bit more dubbing. Just slide it up. It's a bit better. Now, this size of fly, this thickness of tinsel, we're looking at about four turns or so. There we go. Cross your thread. And nice and tight, tie it down. Draw away the excess. We drop wax to make sure it's well caught in. And you've got a good base of wax to wind your material on. And have a wee quick look. Yeah, that's fine, I'm happy with that. Then I've got my main guard here, mixed up again. Onto your thread. Now stretch it out as we go. Just tighten up as we wind it round. Just tighten a wee twist or tighten the material up. Again, I'm looking for the shape. Now I'm going to stop this around about a millimetre or so from the eye and then take away the dubbing. This is where we're going to tie in our hackle. Now I've got, purposely, I've, I've got some nice patterns there, but these are large feathers. Just to show you that you can actually use the larger feathers. Now you can see the length of the, the fibre line is too long for this size of fly. But in a partridge hackle, the fibre lens gets shorter as it goes towards the tip. So that's the fibres I'm looking for. I'm just going to take away these long ones out of the way. There's not much left of the your hackle, but what I do then is get, I've got a fine pair of hackle pliers, which I'm going to grab, hold the tip of the hackle, and then lightly stroke back the fibres, revealing the tip. Let's just get a hold of it just now. There we are. Then I'm going to offer it to the hook with the good side of the front of the hackle towards myself. Fold this back. There's a couple of turns there. And then two or three turns back up. And then cut away the tip. Now it's there. Just lift it out with the point of the scissors. So just take your time at this point. Just watch what you're doing. Trim it away. And then, I mean, you really need to be delicate here in what you're doing. You only really need a turn, a hackle. And some of these are slightly too long, these fibres, so I'm just going to hold the hackle stem and then remove them. I mean, just, it's just got to be careful what you're doing here. You could use a pair of hackle pliers to wind this on, but again, it's not the strongest hackle. Just take it round. You should get at least a turn anyway, you're looking for that. And then, once you've done that, across your thread, I take the thread turns uh, down towards the eye, fold the stem back, now the stem's really thin, and then I can break it away. And you can see the hackle you get, you get a lovely hackle there, the ideal for a small nymph. Then we get our dubbing again, just put that onto our thread, just a tiny bit. Just watch, just clean your fingers of any fur at this point. And then come in, just form like a, a head. Then stroke anything going forwards, draw it back with your finger and thumb. So we quick look. Yeah, that looks fine to me. You can always add a wee bit more or go back. But that that to me looks fine. And then to uh, to varnish the fly, I do it at this point, I just put some varnish onto the thread. Around about ten mil from the threads from the hook. Don't need a lot, don't go down too far because you don't want to wipe it onto your, your wet finishing tool. And then you go one, two, three, four, there's plenty. Finish off, trim away the thread. And there we are. That is a world class nymph. Catch fish anywhere you go. You'll find the brown trout, grayling, wherever you're fishing will certainly like that fly. And that there's your fox squirrel nymph.